think of the bass player playing right on the note and I like to think of the drummer playing just in front of that just to keep pushing it just to keep the intensity there and I, I always think of solo players or solo instruments melodic instruments playing lead lines or singers being the other side behind the bass player so there you have it covered. You have sort of your voice or your lead instrument sort of like giving the emotion and they need a bit more space to get the emotion. You have the very methodic sort of bass sort of plodding away. And on top of that, you have the excitement the, coming from the, the edge, you know, pushing it on, motoring it on as much as coming from the drummer. Carl Palmer was talking about something of vital importance to anybody who's played in a band. The way the instruments fit together rhythmically. Rhythm is obviously a vital part of rock music, but it's not just a matter of how fast or how slow you play. What you play on the drums will affect what the other instruments play, and this in turn affects the structure and arrangement of the whole of the music. When you get into a band, you not only have to think about what to play, but when to play, because often what you don't play can be as, in, as important as what you do. But first of all, we're going to look at how to play, basic technique. Let's start with the drums. Now, the sitting position. It's very important that you don't lean too far forward, don't lean too far backwards. It may sound obvious, but your weight must go straight down through the stool. This way, it leaves your arms, and in particular your legs, free and loose to play. Now then, starting with the right leg and the bass drum. First of all, the heel planted firmly on the base of the plate down here, and the fulcrum is at the ankle. You can play like this. Most rock drummers, however, lift the heel off the plate a bit to get more power, brings the whole leg into play. Don't come too far off the plate, though. Do you get this? And for maximum power, you just bring it halfway down the pedal. Give it some real power. Now then, the third method is to combine those two together. It's quite useful for certain boogie-type things, like this one, for instance. You get a sort of a rocking motion. The hi-hat, same sort of thing. You don't need as much power, of course, but you still can lift the heels off to get a nice balance between the two feet. Alternatively, you can rock it the same as the right foot. Onto the hands, two basic grips. First of all, the match grip, which is uh, what most rock drummers use. In this one, the fulcrum is between the fleshy part of the thumb and the first joint here of the first finger. The other fingers wrap around the base. The stick is like an extension of the forearm, the palm face downwards. The stroke comes from the combination of fingers and the wrist, and for maximum power, the, the whole arm comes in. Now, the other grip is the traditional or orthodox grip. Now, in this one, this was developed by marching band drummers who tended to have the snare drum slung to one side, so they had to develop this rather unorthodox technique where the fulcrum is at the base of the thumb here, the other fingers wrap around again, and the stick goes between the second and the third finger like this. And you get a sort of a cross here between the thumb and the first joint. Now in this one, you want to turn the whole forearm so that you're going up and down in a vertical plane, in this, in this plane. If the wrist turns this time, you get this sort of thing, which is exactly what you don't want. This is the orthodox grip, but it's still used by some of the world's most powerful drummers. So even though rock drummers tend to use this one, we asked Ian Pace and Carl Palmer what they thought about the grips. I would say to anybody starting off that the, the match grip, which, I mean, so many, well, maybe 95% of the rock drummers today play like this. I personally think this is a better way to play, um, mainly because the whole of the percussion family uses this particular grip. Timpani, vibraphone, glockenspiel, even tubular bells, you're playing that way. When you consider the, the orthodox grip only came through the fact that it was a military style for a man marching with a snare drum uh, angled across his leg. I mean, it was impossible to play it like that, really. So that was that. That's, they developed that style. 
On a modern drum kit, you don't actually set the drum like that. So what's the point in using it? One thing you do have from this particular uh, grip is there's a little bit of finger control which goes in there, which, you know, you don't... You can get this way, but I think there's a little more. Um, there's some very well-known drummers who have actually made a, you know, uh, a lifetime sort of style out of, like, this finger technique. But that's not the only thing that you can do on rock drums. Listen to this. Right, that was a selection of straight-ahead rock fills. Did you also know that they can be played separately as technical exercises called rudiments? Now then, very briefly, I played uh, flams, three strokes, and four strokes, and they're based on the primary rudiment, which is the single stroke roll. This is played simply like this, one hand after the other. The next one, double stroke roll, two beats on each hand, like this. If I mix the singles and doubles together, you probably hear the difference a bit better, uh, like this, say. And so on. Now then, in fact, there are 26 standard rudiments and thousands of variations on them. You can find them in loads of drum tutors. It may sound a bit dry, but it's a bit like Deirdre and her guitar, say. Sometimes she might have to look in a book to find different chords, different scales she'd never think of for herself. Same thing can apply to the drums. OK, for instance, to take the next important rudiment, the famous paradiddle. Now, this one you probably wouldn't think of for yourself, but it's very important because it mixes singles with doubles in the closest possible pattern, in this fashion. And that's just left, right, left, left, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left, and so on. Now then, we asked Carl Palmer and Ian Pace to show us just what you can do with a simple pattern like that. Just a couple of simple, for instance, with a paradiddle. One is just using a, a straight 4-4 four, four tempo between, and using, putting the paradiddle between the bass drum and the snare drum. If you take a paradiddle being, right, left, right, right, left, right, left, left. So you take that between the snare drum and the bass drum, you get... immediately have a, a, a rhythm, a patterned rhythm. Uh, now, if you don't know a paradiddle, you've never worked that out in a million years. But it's so simple to do. You take the same thing, you can have a, an interesting uh, paradiddle pattern between 